Hey guys, so today I kind of wanted to talk about mindset work and how how it impacts you, how it sets you apart and how it can help clarify your business or completely confuse the hell out of you, depending on, you know, where you are in the situation, in, in the process. So I'm going to tell you a little story <laughs> about two weeks ago, week and a half ago, yeah, a week and a half ago, I was entered myself into a seven day challenge for um, visibility and showing up in our business and things like that, something I thought would be really, really amazing for me. And the first email came through and it was uh, a detox of Facebook and groups in particular. And so what happened to me was I got in and I started deleting and I went on a deleting frenzy, a frenzy of deleting. I swear I dropped over 50 groups, like things I didn't even know I was a part of anymore. You know what I mean? Um, and things that I probably have more to go. I honestly, I do. I need to go back in there and continue to detox out of my groups and go through my Facebook friends and find people who are no longer serving me um, and that sort of thing. And I kind of had already started to do this slowly and organically, but I kind of did it all at once. And what I realized is that some word choices and some group choices that I had put myself into not only were they not serving me, but I actually feel like they were holding me back. Like, for instance, um, I don't know how many, like, coupon groups either people had added me to or I had been added myself to. How many frugal moms and organic moms on a budget and all this other stuff. It was just a lot of stuff, right? And when I came to the, as I started to go through these and I started to like evaluate my feelings on, on being in these groups, I realized a lot of things. One, the word choice, how you name your group and the words that you choose to use in that are incredibly important. Incredibly important. It's going to be the way that people identify with who you are and what your message is. And two, the wording and the phrasing can feel very limited and restricting. The word frugal to me, maybe not to other people, but to me it feels very restricting and um, definitely not expansive and fun and happy. I feel like I have to do this because I'm in a bind. And so what I realized is that as I was trying saying to the universe, I am a money magnet and doing that, those affirmations, and I want all of the money that the universe is ready to give me and that sort of thing. I realized that I wasn't showing that in the way that I was living my life in the groups that I was associating with, the people that I was associating with, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm sure this has held me back in, in whether it was a conscious fact or it was a subconscious fact, it, the fact remains that it was there and it was back there somewhere in my brain. And so I started to get rid of this weight and it felt amazing, amazing. And then I was like, okay, I'm ready for the next thing. And then I could not get myself to open the next day's email. And I really had to like, it, it perplexed me. I didn't understand why I couldn't open this email. Like for the life of me, I could not open the email. And, or even check my email. Like I was terrified to even check my email. And so, long story short, moving on, what ended up, I realized was that I hadn't given myself the chance to sit and just acknowledge what I had done. I had done so much mindset work in such a short, very limited amount of time that I was overwhelmed. 
And so I think that in today's society, I mean, we're doing things for our business and for our life and the changes that we're trying to make. Sometimes it's really okay to sit for a moment, sit in that feeling and really comprehend what we did for ourselves in that instance. What did you do for yourself yesterday, the day before, the day after? What are you what are you doing for yourself? And how where do you want to be, right? So you always want to think about where you're trying to get to next. You need to be appreciative and grateful for where you currently are and the lessons that you're learning. And your past is all just learning the lessons that of the things you went through. But going forward, what are you doing? Or are your actions aligned with where you're trying to go? Are you being the person that you desire to be, essentially? And that's really important. Really important. Super, super, super important to understand which direction you're trying to go and how to get there. And... When you make a huge step, a big monumental change, especially when it comes to mindset, give yourself a second, pat yourself on the back, have a cup of coffee and rest in that acknowledgement that you just kicked a huge hurdle in the face. and let it go. That's huge. It's huge. But I don't think we give ourselves enough opportunity to experience this. I'll give you another story. I had a girl one day who I was coaching and we were sitting in our, our coaching conversation and she said, my cousin asked me to give her a ride. Okay. She goes, but every time I do that, I end up late to work. Okay. And my family keeps guilting me into giving her a ride. All right. So I listened to her story, and I said, okay, that's great. Here's the thing. Who's paying your bills? Crickets. I heard crickets. She goes, I am. What? And then I asked her what was paying her bills. And she goes, my job. As a freelancer, your reputation is you. It's not like you work at a multi-billion dollar corporation like Verizon or AT&T or Comcast or any of these other companies or Apple, pick one. You alone are your reputation. Your name, your word, how you act, who you are, that's your reputation. So... If giving, if doing this thing over here is going to make you late for work and you are your reputation, how is that serving you? It's not. So use that kind of analogy when you're looking at things in your life and you're maybe saying yes to too many things. You need to do a mindset shift and re really realize what's going on. Because at the end of the day, is saying yes to this going to keep me from a money-making opportunity or cause me to lose money? Because if it's going to cause you to lose money, you really need to learn to say no. You really need to do that mindset shift of, I'm an entrepreneur and this is what I have to do. Now, and understand that you have a choice, regardless of what's going on in your family. If your mama ain't paying your bills, if your cousins ain't paying your bills, if your daddy ain't paying your bills, you have a choice. 
it's up to you. And when and if someone gives you pushback on saying no to something, say, look, I understand where you're coming from. I respect that you have this opinion, but unfortunately that opinion doesn't pay my bills. And this job will. So I have to work. That's it. That's all you really have to say because they there there is no comeback to that. There is no comeback. None. And in all honesty, you're going to gain more respect from doing that because they go, man, she actually takes her job seriously. Yep, I sure as hell do. Sure as hell do. This is important to me. Not that, and, and you can say, look, it's not that you're not important to me and I would absolutely love to take you wherever you need to go. However, I cannot do that and successfully get where I need to go for work. And if you, if you worked at Verizon or some other office job, there would be no question. There would be no, there wouldn't be any argument. None. So remind yourself of that. And remind yourself that you are a business owner and you do have the right to be on time. You have the right to make your own decisions. The reason you got into business for yourself in the first place is so that you can make choices and make changes and make your own schedule. With that being said, if people are counting on you, you need to not disappoint them. You need to be on time. Punctuality is amazing. I, I can't even stress to you how many times as a realtor I tried to show up before our appointment, five or ten minutes before. One, so I could walk through the house and, and maybe feel a little more intelligible about speaking to them about the house, but also just so that I was there with the door unlocked when they got there. It looked good. Did that always work out? No. Absolutely not. <laughs> but I did my damnedest and I always called people ahead of time and said, look, I'm going to be late. I'm stuck in traffic. I'll be there shortly. So there's always a common courtesy and I am trying my best to go above and beyond. And that's what you want to do as an entrepreneur. You want to go above and beyond. All right, guys, that's what I got for you today. Um, I am still running an accountability mastermind group. We're going to have weekly, bi-weekly, and monthly uh, schedules depending on what your needs are and what your desires are and what your budget is. Um, check it out on my website. It's www.amberslocum.com. And also, we're doing a weekly uh question and answer type deal, you know, send me your questions for MailChimp and um, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, you name it, any kind of social media and, and email marketing, I'm your girl. So send me those questions and we'll get the video made for you. Anywho, I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope this video has helped you in one way, shape, or form. And thanks for watching. Have a good day.